the cosmic speed limit. The universe has a speed limit, 299,792 kilometers per second. And unlike road signs, this rule is enforced by physics itself. Before Einstein, scientists thought that you could accelerate infinitely in space. But he discovered that when you try to reach that speed, strange things start to happen. The faster you move, the heavier you become. It's like trying to run with a backpack that someone keeps adding bricks to with every step you take. By the time you approach the speed of light, that backpack will weigh more than our entire planet. And if, by some miracle, you manage to reach the speed of light, your mass would become infinite. This discovery turned the dreams of all science fiction writers into a cosmic joke. Want to race across the galaxy? Sorry, even at maximum speed, it would take you 100,000 years to cross just our Milky Way. Light itself travels at the speed of light because it has no mass. It's like being a super sprinter because you're running light. That's why aliens probably haven't visited us yet. They're just stuck in intergalactic traffic. 95% of what we don't see, everything you know about the universe, all the stars, planets, and galaxies, is only 5% of what actually exists. Scientists have discovered that 95% of our cosmos is completely invisible to us. They call these invisible components dark matter and dark energy. Without dark matter, galaxies would spin so fast that they would be torn apart like a food processor with the lid off. We only know it exists because galaxies don't explode like cosmic firecrackers. And then, there's dark energy. It's even stranger. It makes up 68% of the universe and acts like a cosmic engine on steroids, causing space to expand faster and faster. Imagine blowing up a balloon with galaxies drawn on it. As you blow, the drawings move further apart. That's what dark energy does to our universe. Except no one is blowing up this balloon. It happens on its own. We have no idea where this energy comes from. It's as if your laptop were charging itself without being plugged in. Scientists discovered this by accident and probably regretted it, because now they have to somehow explain how they managed to overlook 95% of everything that exists. A leaky black hole. Imagine the most powerful thing in the universe. A cosmic vacuum cleaner so strong that even light cannot escape it. That's a black hole. And scientists thought they understood everything about it. But then Stephen Hawking came along and discovered that black holes leak. These seemingly perfect prisons for light and matter are actually more like colanders. At the edge of every black hole, pairs of particles are constantly being created. One particle falls inside, and its partner flies off into space. Over time, these escaping particles cause the black hole to slowly evaporate. But what happens to all the information about the things that fell in? According to quantum mechanics, information cannot be destroyed. It's like trying to burn a diary. You can turn it to ashes, but technically all the information that was written in it still exists. But in the case of black holes, it seems that the information simply disappears. This has created what scientists call the information paradox which is essentially the physical equivalent of a computer's blue screen of death error. This discovery means that either our understanding of gravity is wrong, or quantum mechanics is wrong, or both. Water that wasn't there. Imagine discovering a new type of water that can turn ordinary water into thick jelly with a single touch. That's what Soviet scientists thought they had discovered in the 1962nd. They called it super water, and it was essentially the evil twin of ordinary water. This substance was thicker, denser, and refused to freeze or boil when it was supposed to. It boiled at a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. That's enough to cook your instant noodles in literally a couple of seconds. Scientists around the world went crazy over this discovery. They thought they had found a kind of super water capable of transforming ordinary water into its own kind with a single touch. It was like a horror movie scenario but with water in the lead role. But after all the hype, after all the crazy theories and predictions of the end of the world, do you know what polywater turned out to be? Regular water mixed with sweat and soap residue from dirty lab equipment. That's right. These brilliant scientists had essentially discovered dirty water. It's like finding a mysterious dish in the fridge 
and then realizing it's just a salad you forgot about last month. So, next time you're worried about a mistake at work, just remember, at least you didn't convince the entire scientific community that you discovered magic water. The Comparison Epidemic Imagine this. You wake up, grab your phone, and start scrolling through social media. Your friend just posted a photo from their trip to Bali. Another is showing off their new car. Someone else is celebrating a promotion at their dream job. With every scroll, your brain starts doing something strange. This virus makes you feel worse and worse about your own life. Every time you scroll through your feed, you are essentially injecting your mind with a tiny dose of, I'm not good enough. You are literally comparing your behind the scenes to other people's trailers. Those perfect vacation photos don't show flight, delays, and arguments. That post about a new car doesn't mention the huge monthly payments. That celebration of a dream job doesn't show the 60-hour work weeks and stress. But your brain doesn't care about what's not shown. It just keeps comparing, comparing, comparing. Research shows that people infected with this mental virus often can no longer enjoy their own achievements. You could win the lottery, and your brain would think, yeah, but that influencer just bought a bigger house. It's like a pyramid scheme of misery, where everyone thinks they're at the bottom. The excuse loop. Imagine your brain as a very bad lawyer who constantly defends you, even when you are clearly guilty. This is essentially the excuse loop. You make a bad decision, but instead of learning from it, your brain goes into defense mode. It starts coming up with excuses why that terrible choice was actually genius. Like, for example, that time you spent your rent money on cryptocurrency because you're an innovative investor who sees opportunities that others miss. Or when you stayed in a toxic relationship because you're just patient and understanding. Your brain is essentially your personal PR team, turning every disaster into a success story. This mental virus can completely change who you are. Let's say you made a bad financial decision. Instead of learning from it, your brain says, I'm just a risk taker. That's just who I am. And now, you've just rewritten your personality to justify your ineptitude with money. Research shows that our brains would rather create a whole fake personality than admit we were wrong. It's as if your mind would rather build a whole new house than fix a broken window. The more you make excuses, the deeper you dig yourself into this personality hole. Your brain is so skilled at this that you actually start to believe your own excuses. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. But instead of falling in love with your captor, you fall in love with your own bad decisions. The Bucket of Crabs Mentality Imagine a bucket full of crabs at a fish market. One crab starts to climb out, seeking freedom. But instead of helping or just minding their own business, the other crabs grab it and drag it back. Scientists have noticed that this behavior is so reliable that fishermen don't even need lids for their buckets. The crabs control themselves, making sure that none of their companions escape. People do the same thing. When someone in your circle of friends or family starts to live better than everyone else, see what happens. The snide comments begin. Who does she think she is? He's changed so much. He's gotten too big for his boots. This mental virus is so insidious because it often comes from people who claim to care about you. They'll say something like, I'm just worried about you, or I'm a realist. But what they're really saying is, if I can't have it, then you can't have it either. And this virus can infect your own brain. You start to become that crab that drags others down. Your friend has lost weight and you tell her she looks sick. Your coworker got a promotion and you spread rumors about how he must have gotten it dishonestly. People who drag others down aren't usually mean. They're just afraid. Afraid that if someone else succeeds, it will prove that their own excuses are lies. Because if your friend can start a successful business, Maybe you could too.